So I know for a lot of you, men can be downright confusing. All right. And aggravating and frustrating and a pain in the, you know what, <laughs> we can go on and on and on. But, you know, I, I want you to understand it doesn't have to be that way. It's just that there's a lot that maybe you're interpreting incorrectly that you are not getting uh, a proper explanation as to why what you're seeing is happening the way that it is. And that's what I'm here for, to break these things down, to kind of clear up some of this confusion and to make it easier for you to understand what actually works well and what doesn't. And so one of those things or one of those things that women are confused about is this idea that, you know, not trying hard is what works and gets a man. And the video is going to talk, the video is titled, you know, why men love women who don't try hard. But I think there's a misunderstanding of what that actually means. And so let's get into it. First, let me, let me explain the difference between not trying hard and playing hard to get. Because when women hear not trying hard, many take that as play hard to get. Playing hard to get is when you are intentionally and blatantly making things more difficult. When you're intentionally and blatantly holding back, making him basically chase after you, you, you are giving him more obstacles to jump over, okay? And to some of you, you might be thinking like, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's how it should be. No, that's not healthy. For a lot of reasons, it's not healthy. We won't get too deep into why, but that sets the stage for a lot of problems in the relationship later. I have a video I've done before about why making him chase is not a good idea. But when you're playing hard to get, the key word is you're playing. You're playing a game. That's not good. That's a problem. And so I do not want you to engage in playing hard to get. However, not trying hard is speaking more to not being over the top, all right? So playing hard to get puts you on one end of the spectrum, but when you're trying hard, you're on the other end of the spectrum. I'm trying to push you to the middle, okay? I'm trying to push you to a more equal, uh, e equal effort, mutually beneficial situation. We're working together to build something amazing. But when you're trying too hard, you're doing too much. This is an issue. All right. So don't confuse the two. You do have to play a part in the building of a great relationship. Right. But let's let's give you some more clarity on why you're seeing men seem to enjoy or being drawn to women who don't try hard. And the first reason is because he's already very physically attracted to the woman. So I think that one of, one of the things that gets misunderstood so much is that women see men, and even in some situations, give women a free pass. Maybe it could be a bad attitude. Maybe it could be that, oh, well, she's making him chase and he's okay with it. You know, whatever the case may be, she's engaging in unhealthy behaviors, yet still getting men to pursue her. And then that leads some women to think, well, then that's the way to do it. No, what you're overlooking is the fact that it's only working for her and not working. It's only not working against her because the man is so attracted to her. He is overlooking those red flags and those issues. Okay. So sometimes, yes, as a woman, depending on how attracted that man is to you, you will get away with more. That's a reality. Now, it's still not healthy. It still doesn't mean engage in these behaviors, but this is why you see it play out the way that you do. And so like one thing that's coming to mind is when you'll see some women who say, well, uh, men don't want to be approached, right? And so how that doesn't work. And I'm giving you the flip side of this whole thing where it's not working in most cases, because he wasn't already attracted to the woman, okay? But if he was attracted to her, it, it will in more, more cases actually work. So what's the real thing happening here? Attraction. It also reminds me of like, I see these videos on, online 
and a lot of uh, there, there's videos on how to talk to a woman, how to how to have game, so to speak, right? And there'll be this guy, he'll approach a woman, and he says nothing special. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you enjoying yourself? Oh, let me get your number, boom, boom, boom. And he gets the number. And guys will be like, oh, look at his game. That wasn't game. She was just attracted to him. <laughs> Plain and simple. Like, y'all got to be real. If you're already attracted to a guy, he does not have to do as much as the guy who maybe you weren't as attracted to and you're, you have to be convinced almost to give this a chance, okay? All that to say, attraction plays a huge role in why we see certain things being acceptable or not being acceptable. So when you see men being drawn to a woman who's not trying hard, it might simply be because he just was already attracted to her. All right, now the second reason why men are attracted to women who don't try hard is because it exudes a level of confidence and it does not show desperation. So let's start with confidence. Confidence makes everyone look better. And confidence is about knowing your value, knowing your worth. And so we want that to be the case. But I must remind you, I don't want it to be the case to the point where now you slide back into, well, if I know my worth and I know my value, then I'm gonna, he has to do all the work. He has to jump through the hoops. He has to prove to me this, that, and the other. Because now you're crossing the unhealthy line. Now you're crossing a line that will set you up for more bad than actual good, okay? So yes, value yourself to where you don't have to overdo it to build something with a man, that you don't have to overdo it to gain the attention of a man. That's where your confidence should lie. But you should also be confident enough to present your interests in the first place. I think a lot of women shoot themselves in the foot because they're, they're not even willing to show there is interest and desire there. I always say, Women are some of the worst flirters on the face of this earth. Y'all swear y'all flirting. You swear you're throwing hints. And it's like, no. What do you, how do you expect this man to look at that and really see, oh, she has actual interest in me or she's giving me the green light to pursue her? And again, that's a different video where we'll break down flirting and how to more effectively flirt and all that. But the bottom line is you should be willing and should be confident enough to give that green flag, to show them that you have some interest, but I don't want you overdoing it. And so here's an example to me of the difference between being confident and presenting interest, but not quote unquote overdoing it. Some may disagree, but let's see. I'm a believer that, listen, if a woman sees a man she finds interesting and attractive, create conversation. And I think the furthest that woman should go is giving the man the number and saying, hey, if you're interested, give me a call. Okay? That's a level of I'm confident enough to show you that I'm interested. I'm confident enough to give you my number, but I'm still putting the ball in your court to do something with this. Okay? Okay? The, the doing too much, in my eyes, in my opinion, some of y'all may disagree, is asking for his number and now putting it on yourself to, have, to basically lead this situation. That, to me, again, can you, can you be okay with that if, as I mentioned in number one, he's already very much attracted to you? Yes. But if he isn't, I've seen so many situations where the man's not really attracted to the woman. The woman does too much and she acts for the number. But some men don't know how to reject in that moment. They don't know how to navigate this situation. So they give the number, right? And may even engage in conversation, but we're never really interested. And of course, eventually either it goes nowhere. It was a waste of her time, not in her best interest. So to me... If he really is interested, giving the number is enough. You can stop right there. Some of y'all may be saying, hell no, they're even giving your number. But 
I'm just saying that's the furthest I would encourage a woman to go and think it would be effective. But yes, we have to understand even in doing that, does it mean he'll automatically call? No, but it still doesn't, it doesn't work against you in my opinion by offering the number up. But now let's talk about desperation because as I said, not trying too hard stops you from looking desperate. And desperation, unlike, is like basically the opposite of confidence to where it does not, it looks bad on you. All right. It doesn't make you look more, more attractive. It makes you, it could make you look less attractive. And again, think about when you're talking to a man, the man who comes off as confident presents himself as, as more desirable. The man who comes off as desperate you're like, you're going you're gonna to see it very differently. So it's the same thing that can happen with women. And that's why, again, it's about not crossing that line of doing too much. All right. And, and I know some of y'all might be saying, well, Stefan, what's too much? Let's go with this one fundamental principle. If you are not getting matched energy, matched effort, and you're going beyond, that's doing too much. Okay. So again, even using the, the, phone, the phone number situation, to me, you're giving the number. He has an opportunity to match the energy by actually taking the number, using the number, and then going from there. And now we're on the same page. But you asking for it, you then calling him after that. Where was his matched energy? Where was his matched effort? You see what I'm saying? That's when you know you're doing too much. But if you're both putting in the effort, you're both calling each other, you're both wanting to see each other, you're both doing the things necessary to have a successful relationship and a, and a, and a healthy dating process, then cool. Then those efforts are fine. So that's how you know. So yes, not trying too hard keeps you from looking desperate, which will make you look less attractive. All right, so let's keep things moving. The third reason why men are attracted to women who don't try too hard is because it removes unnecessary pressure, okay? So what I mean by that is this. I, again, I do want to reiterate that at the end of the day, the fundamental, the, the thing that has to be there is attraction and actual genuine interest to begin with, right? And I do think that when that's there, you will always have more leeway, plain and simple. However, even though you have more leeway, when you are trying too hard, when a woman is trying too hard, it can make a man feel a little overwhelmed. It can feel a little bit like she's putting a lot of pressure. Now, I do not want you to confuse that with things like you know, trying to discuss where, you know, what does he want in the relationship? Like, does he want something serious or discussing where do we stand? You know, where are we going with this? Though someone can claim that's putting pressure and some men may use that as a defense mechanism to get you to shut up and not talk to him about it. To me, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But when, again, when you are calling him and he's not even reciprocating those efforts when, when you are the one basically driving the situation, it can, it, it can have a negative impact on the man. But I also think it's not even so much it's having a negative impact and putting pressure. I think it's exposing that there's a disconnect there. Because you have to ask yourself, if I'm trying so hard, why? Why am I doing so much? Because maybe I'm doing so much because I am, I'm saying you as the woman, you are sensing that he's not as interested and you're hoping to push this thing along off the strength of your interests. Okay. Or you, you know, you, you, you're trying so hard because maybe you've, you've experienced a, a bad relationship previously where things didn't work out and maybe you felt like you didn't do enough. So now you're trying to overcompensate and that stemmed from you have not healed from that past relationship. You know what I'm saying? There's something, there's a reason why you're crossing that line of doing too much and you have to be willing to look at yourself in the mirror and understand what's going on. And if it is because he simply does not have the same interest level as you, because that's an important thing to understand. There will be many men that you may meet 
who has interest, but not enough interest to be serious, not enough interest to move this thing along and get to a next level with each other. All right. They, they have this one foot in the door, one foot out, or they may be interested in as far as they want to have some fun with you, but they don't want to be seriously committed with you. And because of that, they are trying to tamper down their efforts to not let you think that they're really about something more. Okay. So if you find yourself in that situation and you find yourself where you're doing a lot and he's not doing what you feel is enough, I always say, you don't see the red flag and you run, you see it and you address it. Talk to that man. If he is then unwilling to correct that issue, let him go. But again, it starts with you being willing to, to, to be honest with yourself about why it, it has even gotten to that point. All right, before I move to the next one, my videographer brought up a great point. So two other reasons why you might be feeling the need to put that pressure on and you're doing so much. One of those reasons is because of the pressure being put on you by family and friends. And so if you're a woman who you got people ask you when you're going to have babies or when you're going to be married, when you're going to have a man, blah, 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 blah. Or you're just even seeing it all around you in other family and friends. And that's giving you this, this pressure and this anxiety about wanting to have that in your life. You've got to be mindful of that and not let that get the best of you because that has pushed women into trying too hard, doing too much, overlooking red flags and trying to make things work with a man who they should have just walked away from. Now, another reason that, and I'm going to give you all a quick story in a second of why you might be doing too much and trying too hard is because you feel like he's seeing other women, he's dating other women, and you are trying to stand out and separate from the pack. So you're now trying to overcompensate by doing extra and doing more. And it reminds me of when this one time, this young woman DM me, this is a true story. She, she DMs me, she says she's dating this guy and she's trying to figure out how to become his number one. And she was asking more so of what can she do sexually to become that number one. And I was like, well, wait a minute, slow down. Like, give me some more information. And she says, this guy has a rotation of six women and one woman for each day of the week. Okay. And she, sorry to laugh. She was his, fr his Friday girl or Thursday girl. It don't matter. She was one of the days. Okay. And, but she felt like she, she already had the upper hand. This was her words. She felt like she was the youngest and the hottest. So she felt like she just needs to figure out how to put it on him in the bedroom and she's good. And I was like, listen, that's not going to work. That's not going to get you anywhere. He already, it already seems like he doesn't really have that respect for you. And you're not going to be elevated from a girl in his rotation to number one. And as we talked more, what came out was, he had a seventh girl, but girl number seven was treated differently than all the other girls. Girls one through six, he was having sex with, and he wouldn't like be out in the, like he, he, he would let them see each other. He didn't care. Girl number seven, he kept her away from all the other ones. They, and they were not allowed to have any contact to that woman or, and I don't know if the rest of them even knew who she was, but he completely kept her protected from that. If you want to call that protected, uh, he wasn't even having sex with number seven. All right. He really valued number seven. I know that might sound crazy because he has six other women, but what I'm saying though, is he had seven on a higher pedestal. Now, the real moral of that story as it pertains to this video is. Number seven did not have to try harder. She didn't have to overcompensate. So no, the, the other girl, here she was trying to figure out how to do more when in reality, it just wasn't there. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be mindful of don't get caught up in some competition. I just want you to show up as your best true self. If your best true self is not enough for this man, then he ain't the man for you. Don't go any further than that. All right. So before I say number four, uh, be sure to join my special coaching program. There's a lot of women having their lives changed 
um, learning how to heal, find their purpose, hear from God, meet relationship minded men. I've had people, no lie, true story, who I guess you want to call it graduated from it, finding a man, getting married. There's a lot of success stories. You can be one of them. Go to receivingmyblessings.com. Click the link in the description or in the comment section. Join today. I'm telling you, it's going to be very, very beneficial. So now, the fourth reason why men are attracted to women who do not try hard is because it makes you look like you're not easy to get. Now, when I say not easy to get, again, do not default to playing hard to get. That's not what we're talking about. Not being easy to get does not mean you are difficult, okay? Does not mean you make things hard for any man. It just means you don't entertain any and every man. It means that you have a certain standard and you don't, you, you know, a guy has to come correct to get with you. Because here's the thing I think a lot of women don't realize. A lot of men have witnessed women getting with good for nothing men. Getting with men that everyone else could see he was trash but she overlooked it and got with him anyway. Now, if it was a situation where it actually worked out beautifully, that'd be different. But the majority of those situations don't work out well, which then makes the man look at the woman like, like why would she get with a man like that? Now, not everyone's life is being viewed by other individuals, but you never know who's watching. You never know who's paying attention. But either way, when men perceive you as easy to get that makes you look less desirable and so when you are trying too hard that can to some men come across as easy to get because it also then pours into where is her self-worth does she even know her value because if she did she wouldn't have to cross that line of doing too much which i then looks like maybe you're being a little desperate. And do you see what happens? It's just, it just adds up more and more to perceptions of you that don't play in your favor. So the woman who does not try hard looks like a woman who knows who she is, confident about who she is, understands her value, and is not going to entertain any old joker that comes her way. And that becomes a desirable trait, all right? Because now when that man is able to actually get with you, he feels like I accomplished something like that. I did it. I'm that guy who got this woman that all these other guys been trying and they couldn't do it. You see what I'm saying? So it does feed the ego. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but it is a real thing. It is a real thing because men don't, the average man does not want a woman who's easily accessible. Plain and simple. All right. So not trying hard conveys that to a man. All right. So now number five and the fifth reason why men are attracted to women who don't try hard is because it shows him or it can convey to him that you have a life outside of him, which then equates to he is not fully responsible of trying to always make you happy. So let me explain further. One, the, a lot of times the woman who is doing so much or doing too much, it's almost like she got too much time on her hands, okay? And, and it comes with that pressure we talked about earlier. It comes up with that idea of now he feels like he's the center of your universe, which then again adds to that feeling. It's overwhelming. It's, it's a huge responsibility to have, okay? And unless the man is in a place where he's trying to control you in that way, he wants you all up under him, because I'm not going to lie, some guys may like that. They want you, they want to be your whole world. Okay. I, that's a whole nother video on, on the, whether that's healthy or not and all that and breaking that whole thing down. Cause there's a lot I would have to explain, but the point is in some situations, it won't be a problem. But for a lot of guys, it can be a problem because the man wants you to be able to 
have your own happiness, be able to generate your own happiness and have a life outside of him. It also, again, helps you from putting that burden on him, overwhelming him and creating what I feel is a more balanced experience in the relationship. So I think this point, I I have to say, is really more for you than it is for him. Like it, it, it can lead to why a man will be more attracted to that woman. But I think for you as a woman, it's about making sure that you have a well-rounded life that doesn't make it all about a man. Because when that happens, you will find yourself being overly consumed by him. You will find yourself being more needy in a way that it can make things a little unhealthy, okay? You will find yourself where, like I I had this one lady who uh, messaged me and she told me straight up, she said, when her husband leaves the house, She's like, feels like she's going crazy. She does not know how to enjoy herself outside of her husband. So it's not go crazy like she's feeling insecure. It's going crazy like I'm bored. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to enjoy myself. So now she's blowing his phone up and that can become stressful. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how they were able to get that far (laughs) with that being the case, but lucky for her, they are married. But if they want to stay married, she's going to have to find some ways to add different things to her life so she's not put all that responsibility on the man. So I think for you as a woman, it will be a healthy, helpful thing. But yes, it could contribute to uh, a lot of men, certain men being more attracted to you because of it. Now, here's, I guess you could say the bonus that I I, want to tell you. And I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I want to reiterate it. At the end of the day, you've got to be true to yourself. All right. I don't want you to overthink this. I I, I do want you to stick to the principle of doing too much is when you are making efforts and he's not reciprocating. He's not matching those, that energy, so to speak. And you're going up, up above and beyond. Now don't confuse that with, all right, there may be seasons where He's been a man who's been showing you the energy, doing his part. But let's say, for example, someone passes in his family and he goes through a little stretch of being down, grieving. And so in that time, his efforts may not be as strong because he's consumed with his grief. And in that time, you'll pick up the slack. That's fine. But that's that's fine because he was a man who showed you he was matching your efforts, matching your energy. So that's good. It's different when you're dealing with a man who was never, never putting forth a mutual effort with you. He, he can't, he, you can't now say, well, now that something bad is happening, I'm going to give him a pass, but he was never doing what he's supposed to do. So that's, that's a different scenario. Okay. But again, that's the fundamental thing is you want to pay attention to that. We're both putting forth effort. But I don't want you to overthink this to the point where like, I'll give an example. Let's say you're a woman who does love to communicate and you love to talk every day. Okay. And let's just say this man is not much of an initiator when it comes to conversation. However, he is always willing to pick up the phone when you call him. He is always willing to give you his full attention. And there's other aspects in the relationship or dating that he may pick up the slack. So he may not be the most initiating conversation, but he's more than willing and initiates taking you out, doing things with you, spending time with you. Okay. So I don't want you to one, think that you can't be the caller that you are. If you're a person that likes to talk every day, then call. If that's just true to who you are, be true to that because you don't want to sell him on a personality that doesn't really exist. You don't want to scale that back to a level that you can't sustain and make him think, oh, she's real chill and laid back with this whole phone thing. Then you guys get together and now you finally unleash your true self and now it throws everything off because that's not what he was attracted to. That's not what he w- that he thought he was signing up for. Okay. So you want to be true to, your, to, to who you are from day one. And, and using that example, doing too much is when you're not just calling because you like to ca- have conversation, but now you're calling so much because you're, you're worried about, well, is he with some other woman? Is he doing this? It, maybe I need to hit him up to show him that, you know, I really like him. Now when you're, you're acting out of 
again, these other factors that, that are causing you to do more than you would have usually done, that is where we're crossing that line. But be true to yourself, be real, communicate what your desires are, what you're looking for out of his efforts. Be mindful of that example I gave where sometimes matching effort isn't about, well, I called five times and so he should be calling five times. It might be, yes, you're more of a caller, but he's more of a spend quality time together person. And you guys are putting forth an effort mutually to build a harmonious, happy, and healthy relationship. Oh, and one more thing, I'm sorry. The other part of the bonus is let God guide you. You know I got I gotta throw God in there. You, you know, if you watch my videos, you know what I'm about. At the end of the day, you know, that's a great way. If you are in a moment of like, okay, am I doing too much? How should I handle this? Pray about it. Talk to God. Let God guide you. God's not gonna have you overextending yourself from some, for some man when you don't need to, all right? And it, it goes back to saying, you don't have to chase what God sent. So if it's truly for you, you showing up as your true, authentic, best self is going to be enough. But let God guide you to the moments of confusion. Let God guide you when you're questioning, should I call, should I not call? Pray about it. It's really that simple. Pray about it in that moment and listen to your spirit and trust your intuition. Trust your spirit and don't let don't let that moment get the best of you and consume you and cause stress unnecessarily because you're trying to lean on your own understanding and not God. Thank you for watching this video. I hope and pray you enjoyed it. Be sure to watch this one over here on the seven honest reasons masculine men love feminine women. Now, before I get into the seven reasons why masculine men love feminine women, I want a couple principles I need to go over with you. The first thing is do not